Hi there. Now in this video what I want to do is show you how we go about using the quadrant rule or as some people call it the cast diagram. And it's a useful diagram to have because it's going to help solve trigonometric equations without having to resort to drawing the graphs. And as you can see here, I've got the graphs of y equals sine x, y equals cos x, and y equals tan x. You should be familiar with these graphs anyway by now. So, what is the quadrant rule or the cast diagram? Well, first of all, what we do is we start with drawing a cross like this. And it divides into four sections. This is called the first quadrant second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant, hence the name quadrant rule. Now, if we consider angles between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, then if we look at each of these functions, in the first quadrant between 0 and 90 degrees, you can see that for each of these graphs, they're above the x-axis. In other words, all the functions sine, cos, and tan of an angle are always going to be positive. And we denote that by just saying that all of them are positive. Now if we look at the interval 90 to 180 degrees, this is the second quadrant, and when we go to the second quadrant between 90 and 180 degrees, notice that the sine of any angle is always positive. It's above the x-axis, whereas the other two functions are below the x-axis and negative. So we have that sine, we'll do it in red just to correspond with the sine graph, we notice that sine is always positive. The other two are negative. And when we go into the third quadrant, that is to look at angles between 180 degrees and 270 degrees, Let's see what happens then. As we move into the third quadrant, sine is negative now, cosine is negative, but tangent is positive. So we've got in the third quadrant that tan of all angles are positive. And finally, if we look in the fourth quadrant, between 270 degrees, not naught anymore, but 270 degrees, and 360 degrees. What happens now? Well in the fourth quadrant you can see that it's only cosine that is above the x-axis that's positive. The other two are below the x-axis so they're negative. So we've got cosine, we we'll mark that in blue, cosine is the only function which is positive. Now I've looked at angles to the right of the y-axis, the positive angles. And what we have is that turning in an anti-clockwise sense always is positive. But what about the left-hand side of the graph? These take on negative angles. And if we were to look at going from 0 to minus 90 degrees, this is turning in the clockwise sense. When we turn clockwise, these give us the negative angles. Now when we turn quarter of a turn in the negative sense, this angle here is minus 90 degrees. It's the same as turning in the positive sense 270 degrees. And let's see what happens to the trigonometric functions for angles in this range, 0 to minus 90 degrees. When we look at all the graphs here in this interval, the only one that's positive is cosine. Same as what we had here. And if I carry on turning round in the clockwise sense, the negative sense, when we get round to here, this would be a turn of minus 180 degrees. And if I look at the interval from minus 90 to minus 180 degrees, let's see what happens now we see that the only graph above the x-axis that's positive is the tan graph. And this agrees again with this. And I'm sure you can guess what's going to happen next, because when we turn from minus 180 
to here, this is a turn of minus 270 degrees. And when we look at this interval from minus 180 to minus 270 degrees, we get the same result here, that sine is positive and the other two are negative. And finally, when we go from minus 270 all the way back round to here, equivalent turn of minus 360 degrees, in this interval, from minus 270 to minus 360, guess what? They're all positive. So it agrees with what we had here. So this essentially is the quadrant rule. It summarizes what is displayed in these graphs, just in this diagram. In summary, what we've got is this. We've got our quadrant diagram. We say that this is naught degrees. We know that turning in an anti-clockwise sense is positive. Turning in a clockwise sense is negative. But you'll quite often see people just write A here for all the trigonometric functions. S here, T here, and C here. So we've got sine is positive, tan is positive, and cosine is positive there. And some people refer this as the cast diagram purely because it spells cast, C-A-S-T. I personally don't like that method because I quite often see students make the mistake of placing C in this quadrant rather than all a positive. So I tend to encourage people to just remember it as ASTC. Or you might want to have some rhyme that helps you remember this. And one that I often say to students is all stations to, let's say, Coventry. And clearly what I've got here is that the initial letters A for all being positive, S for sine being positive, T for tan being positive, and C for cosine being positive. So the quadrant diagram, or as I say, some people call it the cast diagram. And what I'll be showing you next is how we can use this diagram to help us solve equations, trigonometric equations, very efficiently without having to resort to drawing the graphs. And I'll be showing you how to do this in the next video in this series. So if you found this useful, I hope you'll carry on and uh, check out that next video. Okay?